In this video, I'm going to go through the concept of earned value management, a project management technique used to control the scope, the budget, and the schedule. Earned value management answers questions like, is the project on track? Are we spending more or less than we planned? I'll go through the core concepts as well as give you a useful analogy you can use to help better understand, remember, and then apply these concepts. In addition to that, we're going to go through a worked example so you can better understand how to calculate these metrics and see how to do it in the real world. So earned value management is a project management technique used during the execution phase of the project. It integrates scope, schedule, and cost, and it's a way of assessing project performance. So earned value management, it's a project management technique used during the execution phase, and it integrates scope, schedule, and cost to better assess project performance using quantitative metrics. So objective metrics we can calculate based on actual work performance information. We can use earned value management techniques to answer questions like, are we on track or behind progress? Are we completing activities efficiently? Are we spending more or less money than we planned? And based on current performance, when are we projecting the project to finish? The way earned value management works is you compare the cost and the scheduled baseline to actual project performance and work performance information. So the cost and the schedule baseline are what we develop during the project planning phase to work out how much we think the project is going to cost to deliver and how long it's going to take. Then we compare these baselines to actual project performance. So the core concept is that we calculate three important metrics that we can then calculate a series of other metrics based on these. So the three core concepts that at any point in time we want to know the planned value or PV, so the budgeted cost for work scheduled to be completed by a certain date. So that's where we plan to be at a certain point of time. We want to calculate our earned value, so the budgeted cost for work actually completed to a certain date, point in time. So how much work we should have completed up to a certain point of time and our actual cost, how much we've spent to a certain point of time during the project. So how many costs have we actually incurred up to a certain point of time. So at any point of time during the execution of the project, we can calculate these three metrics, the planned value, the earned value, and the actual cost. To better explain these concepts, I wanna use the analogy of a project to a trip down to the beach for a holiday. I'm gonna talk about what planned value, earned value, and actual cost are in the context of driving down to the beach for a holiday. So our planned value is the estimated time and route. So in this case, it's gonna take us, we're planning for it to take us two hours and 20 minutes. So we put the data into Google Maps. Google Maps tells us our planned value, so our planned duration for the work is two hours and 20 minutes. Our planned value can also be calculated at a certain point of time during the trip. For example, if we're 30 minutes into our trip based on the initial route and time we calculated, there should be a point along the journey that we would have planned to be at. So say halfway through the trip or an hour and 10 minutes into the trip, we should have been roughly halfway through the trip because when we initially planned the trip in Google Maps, it said it was going to take two hours and 20 minutes. So at an hour and 10 minutes into the journey, we should be halfway through the trip. Our earned value is then the actual distance we've covered. So our planned value at an hour and 10 minutes into the trip is we should be 50% of the way through. Our earned value will be the actual point we are through the trip. So for example, at an hour and 10 minutes into the trip, we might be 75% of the way through, or we could only be 25% of the way through. So our earned value represents the actual distance we've covered, while planned value represents where we should be at the journey based on our initial plan. Our actual cost is the resources we've used and paid for to get to that point in the journey. So for example, on our trip down to the beach, we've spent an hour and 10 minutes of our time and we've paid for a certain amount of our fuel. So our actual cost represents the cost we've paid for the resources to get to that certain point in time in our journey. So based on these three core concepts, our actual cost, our planned value, and our earned value, we can then calculate a series of metrics that help us to understand 
project performance holistically. So we want to look at project performance in terms of time and cost. So these metrics, which I'm going to talk about further, are the cost variance, the schedule variance, the cost performance index, and the schedule performance index. And if we calculate these four key metrics based on our actual cost, our planned value, and our earned value, we get a holistic view of project performance. First metric we can calculate is cost variance. So cost variance is the difference between our earned value and our actual cost. So the difference between what portion of our budget we should have spent and what we actually spent. So a positive cost variance, so if our earned value is greater than our actual cost, indicates the project is under budget. However, if our earned value is less than our actual cost, so cost variance is negative, shows that the project is over budget. Schedule variance is the difference between earned value and planned value. So the difference between what portion of the work we have completed versus what portion of the work we should have completed. So positive schedule variance indicates that our earned value is greater than our planned value. So we have completed more of the work than we had originally planned to. So we're ahead of schedule. When a negative schedule variance indicates that we have completed less of the work than we'd originally planned to, which means we're behind schedule. Our cost performance index is the ratio of our earned value divided by our actual cost. So it measures how efficiently we're spending money. If our earned value is much greater than our actual cost, we'll have a CPI greater than one, which means for every dollar we're spending, we're completing greater than that equivalent value of our budget. So if this example, if our earned value is $25 and our actual cost was $16, our cost performance index would be 1.56, which means for every dollar we budgeted for, we're doing a $1.56 of work, which is a good thing. On the other hand, if it's less, we'll get a number that's less than one, which means that every dollar we're spending, we're earning less than $1 of our budget. Similar to our cost performance index, we can also calculate our schedule performance index. So our schedule performance index is the efficiency of completing tasks in terms of time. So for every dollar we plan to spend according to our schedule baseline, what proportion of work are we getting completed? So SPI greater than one means we're ahead of schedule and completing tasks more efficiently. And SPI of less than one means we're behind schedule and completing tasks less efficiently in terms of time than we originally planned. Extending on these four key metrics we've calculated, we can actually use earn value management as a forecasting tool. So earn value management can be used to predict project performance going forward. Rather than just looking retrospectively at our cost performance index or our schedule performance index, we can use earn value management to look into the future and answer questions like how much will we spend based on our current performance? When are we planning on finish based on our current performance? And what rate do we need to spend going forward to ensure the project comes in under budget? Or what rate do we need to complete tasks at to ensure we finish on time based on how we've gone in the past? So forecasting can provide further insights and tell us what performance we have to achieve to finish the project within our schedule or budget baseline but it also can provide useful information to pass on to management and stakeholders. Okay, so the first way we can use earned value management to forecast performance of the project is we can calculate the estimate at completion. So based on our current spending, what are we anticipating to spend to complete the project? So the formula for estimate at completion is our budget at completion, which is the original total budget from our cost baseline divided by our cost performance index. So what's the rate we're currently spending? So we take our original budget for the project, our budget at completion, and divide it by our cost performance index, the rate we're currently spending. So for example, when we looked at cost performance index, we said if that the CPI was greater than one, then it means we're performing well in terms of our original budget. When if it's less than one, we're performing poorly. So if we think about Taking our original budget, if we divide it by a gr number greater than one, then we'll get a number smaller than our original budget because our CPI is greater than one, so we're managing our money efficiently. On the other hand, if we're dividing our budget by a number that's less than one, it's going to give us an estimate of completion that's greater than our initial budget because we're not spending in line with the initial budget. 
Once we've calculated our estimate at completion, we can also calculate our estimate to complete. So estimate to complete represents the estimated cost required to finish the project, which is the difference between our estimate at completion minus what we spent today. And that tells us how much money we need to finish the project. The next metric we can calculate, which when you look at the formula seems very confusing, but the concept is relatively simple. TCPI is the to complete performance index, which tells us what rate would we have to spend at to finish the project within our initial budget. So we're calculating the cost performance index we'd have to achieve for the remainder of the work to finish within our initial budget. The way we calculate that is we divide the difference between our budgeted completion minus our earned value, which is the money we have left to finish the project divided by the estimate to complete. So what amount are we planning on spending to finish the project at the current rate? If the TCPI is greater than one, it means to finish within our original budget, the project needs to be more efficient, it needs to spend money more carefully. The TCPI is less than one, means the project can spend more than the planned budget. Okay, so I know all these metrics, EAC, TCPI, CPI, they can all get a little bit confusing and messy and for me, I know the only way to properly learn anything is to do it in practice. So that's why now I want to go through a worked example of an EVM calculations on a construction project. So the situation we've got is we're going to be installing underground drainage. We've got five kilometers of underground drainage to install. The activities include excavation, pipe installation, welding the pieces of the pipe together and then backfilling. And it's going to be a mix of self-performed, so work we're using our own laborers for, and subcontracted work which we're engaging external vendors for. The initial budget for the project is going to be $500,000 and we have a duration of six months. So our cost baseline is $500,000 and the duration, our schedule baseline is six months to complete the project. Let's look in more detail at our initial budget, the cost baseline and schedule, the schedule baseline. So we're looking at each of the tasks and how much money and time we've got allowed for each of them. So site preparation, we've got a budget of $50,000 and a duration of one month. Excavation, a budget of $100,000, a duration of one month as well. Pipeline, we've got a budget of $200,000 and a duration of three months. Welding, we've got a budget of $70,000 and a duration of one month. Backfilling, a budget of $30,000 and a duration of one month. And finally, testing, we've got a budget of $50,000 and a duration of one month. So these form our cost baseline and our schedule baseline. Okay, let's imagine we're three months into our project, which is 50% of the plan value. Remember the overall duration we had for the project was six months. So we're gonna do the three month check-in and we're gonna calculate this key metric so we can work out whether the project is on track, ahead of track or behind track. Based on our initial schedule baseline, what are the tasks that should have been completed by month three? So we should have had the site preparation completed, we should have had the excavation completed, and we should have had the pipeline completed. So let's work out our plan value. Our plan value is the value of the budget we should have spent up to this certain point of time. So we should have spent the allowance for site preparation, which is $50,000, the allowance for excavation, which is $100,000, and 50% of the pipeline which is also $100,000. So our total plan value, the end of month three is $250,000. Next, let's work out our earned value. So the budgeted cost of the work we've completed to this point in time. So we've completed the site preparation, we've completed the excavation. However, we're only 40% of the way through the pipeline when according to our initial schedule baseline, we should have been 50%. So if we tally up the budget of the work we've completed, We've got our site preparation, which is $50,000, our excavation, which is $100,000. However, we can only take 40% of the $200,000 budget for pipeline, which is $80,000. The total earned value by the end of month three is $230,000. Let's now calculate our actual cost. So how much we've spent to a certain point of date. So we'd get this information from our finance, our cost controlling system. So site preparation, we spent $55,000, which was slightly over budget because we initially underestimated the quantity of work. Our excavation, we've spent $95,000, which was under budget due to some certain procurement gains when we were awarding the subcontract package. 
and our pipeline is at $90,000, which again is slightly higher than our initial budget because of higher material costs. So the total of what we've spent up to the end of month three is $240,000. Okay, let's now calculate our earned value metric. So the first one is going to be our cost variance. So cost variance is the difference between our earned value, so how much of our budget we've earned, and our actual cost. So the difference between $230,000, which is our earned value, and our actual cost is $240,000, which gives us a cost variance of negative $10,000, which means with $10,000 over budget up to this certain point of time. The next metric we can calculate is our schedule variance. So how are we tracking according to the schedule based on to the difference between our earned value and our planned value. So we've earned $230,000 worth of our budget, but we should have earned $250,000. We should be 50% of the way through. So we're at negative $20,000. So the project is $20,000 worth of work behind schedule. Let's now calculate our cost performance index. So the cost performance index is the ratio of our earned value divided by our actual cost, which is 0.96. What this tells us is for every dollar we're spending, we're only completing 96 cents worth of work. And for our schedule performance index, we divide our earned value by our planned value which gives us $230,000 divided by $250,000, which is 0.92, which means the project is progressing at 92% of the plan rate, indicating a delay to our schedule. We can then use this information to forecast the total costs of completing the project. So our estimated completion is the budget of completion divided by the cost performance index. So if we take our initial budget, $500,000, divided by the rate we're spending money, which is 0.96, it gives us a number of $520,833. So if we continue spending at the current rate we're spending, which is 0.96, we're on track to spend $20,833 over our initial budget. We can also calculate our estimate to complete. So how much money do we need to finish the project, which is gonna be difference between our estimate at completion minus our actual costs, which tells us we need an additional $280,833 to finish the project. The final metric we can calculate is our TCPR, so to complete performance index. What this tells us is what rate are we going to have to spend money at finish the project within our budget. What this tells us is we need to achieve a CPI of 1.04 to finish the project under budget. Okay, to summarize, you can see how we've taken real work performance information and turned it into a set of metrics that give us a holistic understanding of project performance. From the data we can work out, is our project ahead of schedule? Is it behind schedule? Are we spending more money than we plan or are we spending less money than we plan? We get holistic understanding of project performance in terms of schedule and cost. Key takeaway with all these metrics, all these calculations is going to be that you need to use the information to make decisions to change the way things are. If you calculate all these metrics and do nothing about it, you've done nothing to improve project performance. So whenever you're performing an earned value management calculation, using the data to gain insights, the goal is to do something with this information, do something with this data. If you're spending more money than when you wait, when you planned, work out why and work out what you can do about it. Metrics mean nothing unless you do something with them. Some shortcomings of earned value management though is that you're ultimately using a baseline of cost and you're using the past to predict the future which isn't always going to hold true. You might have had some initial huge cost blowout in the beginning that isn't applicable to the remainder of the scope which means the way these metrics are calculated, the way these metrics are used fundamentally isn't going to be true. The other important thing to take away is that when you're talking about schedule performance index is you're not addressing the critical path activities. You're not making special consideration for the activities that if delayed, delay project performance. If you look at schedule performance in terms of a baseline of cost, it might not actually reflect true project performance.